there's a need to decolonize from, say, the processes and the systems that really attacked Indigenous ways of knowing and did their best to not just uh, have a physical um, genocide of Aboriginal people, but really attempted to kill Aboriginal ways of thinking and Aboriginal ways of doing things, Aboriginal ways of being. Uh, so we have to recover from that. But it's not just enough to recover from the sickness that was promoted by that. We have to go beyond so that we can flourish and become healthy and beautiful people again. So I think we need to understand that research is very much implicated in the colonial project, that it has been part of the marginalization, the oppression, the dispossession of Indigenous people, and we need to come to terms with that. But at the same time, research is an opportunity for the renewal of relationships. And in the context of the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous Peoples, the more recently the, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission findings, um, you know, th there is this opportunity to, to really engage research as, as part of the reconciliation process. It really comes down to three core principles. Um, and these are that the research be community defined, that the research process itself be collaborative, and that the outcomes of the research be, um, be meaningful to the community. I think if you're viewing research as a, as a way of engaging with community, as a way of um, promoting change in the community to make our lives beautiful, then it has, we have to include everyone in that. Um, so the analogy I often make is that I view myself as a feminist, even though I'm obviously not a woman. Being a feminist doesn't mean that I know the experience of what it means to be a woman, but I can align with the philosophy, align with some of the goals. So I try to use the word indigenous now to describe the philosophy, the beliefs that I'm trying to promote. Uh, in recognition that non-Indigenous people have the, often have the same beliefs, often have the same goals. I love a quotation actually I came across a few years ago from uh, uh, an Indigenous um, geographer, and she uh, indicated that if we assume we're guests, we will be welcome, but if we assume we'll be welcome, we're no longer guests. And it seems to me that that captures um, really the the core message that, that there is a space for non-Indigenous scholars, but I think it has to be on the terms of the community and Indigenous peoples more broadly. If we can take a strengths-based approach to the research that we're doing and start to think of our Aboriginality, our indigeneity, our Creeness as a protective factor rather than, a, than something that is another um, risk factor, then it changes the whole focus of how we do research. And I think if we start to engage in community research that looks for community strengths, and how do I engage these community strengths? How do we use these strengths to build even stronger communities? Then it shifts the whole focus away from that. These are the problems with communities to these are our, our this is our potential. This is how we can do things that are gonna make our communities even better. Work with those strengths. As a geographer who has uh, training in earth sciences, um, I think what's really uh, worked well in um, for me has been the fact that my interests align with uh, indigenous communities around a, a shared interest in the protection of their lands and seas. Um, so my training and my, my emphasis has not been in studying indigenous cultures, indigenous societies, but in working with them to protect um, traditional lands and, and their institutions of stewardship and um, knowledge and tenure and, and practice. If we want to promote real change, I think we need to recognize our own sub subjectivity uh, and work with it. So I always say that if research doesn't change you as a person, then you're not doing it right. <laughs>